Well, hello. Uh, today I'm out on the paddle on Loch Ard. Um, it's actually very, very warm at the moment. I'm probably going to have to strip a layer off in a minute. But uh, I'll get this bit of recording out of the way. I put in at King Loch Ard. There's a little village hall there where apparently you are allowed to park when it's shut. But there's a, a little lay-by by the side of it, so I've managed to park up there. And then there's a, a gate opposite and you can access a little beach area. So uh, not too bad, sort of. A little bit of a walk carrying your gear, but well worth it. Well, I've stripped off a layer because the uh, sun's out and it got rather hot. And now I'm heading towards a little island in the loch called Eileen Gorn, I believe. I hope I pronounced that right. It's uh, never easy being Scottish with a southern London accent. Very, very calm out here today. Again, I was uh, on the pedal yesterday on Loch Kong. Um, a much more moody, moody day, but still, still an awesome paddle. Everything's good, as long as it's not raining. But um, this one was on my bucket list from last year, actually pre-COVID. And then I got up here last year with uh, my two sons. Uh, we went out on Loch Lugnid, I brought two kayaks with me. Uh, one son stayed on longer, the other one went home and we came up here on a Thursday to paddle and it was blowing a hoolie and uh, pouring down the rain so it just wasn't on. So basically all I did was a recce, places to put in. One was the near the village hall and the other one was the far side of the loch. There's a lay by, a little wall that you can climb over and you can put in there. I chose this end because it's nearer to the island, so if the weather changes, I'm not having to paddle the full length of the, the loch just to get to the island, so I can see the island, paddle down a bit, uh, and do as much as I want, really. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, behind me is where I put in, that's uh, King Lochard. Yes, surprisingly, as soon as I get out on the loch and I strip off, it's looking very, very moody. Some very, very dark clouds coming in. So, hey ho, we'll keep going for a bit and hope for the best. I've been up in Scotland um, all week so far since Saturday. I travelled up to Cumbria from Kent the week before and I had a week there kayaking on uh, Coniston water and a, a few wee walks and the weather turned particularly nasty then I came up here and I pitched up uh, on the banks east bank of Loch Lomond um, I got out once but without a camera and after that the weather was just horrendous I couldn't get out so I was a bit disappointed but hey ho that's that's what happens you know you're in the hands of the weather and it is Scottish weather. Then I travelled up to a little off-grid campsite called Loch Kong Campsite, which is basically just uh, like wild camping. It's got a water tap and a couple of toilets, and that's it. And I'm in like a forest type pitch with access to the loch. And I got out on it yesterday and I was absolutely made up. It's only a small loch, or wee loch, but it is absolutely Fantastic. Really, really enjoyed myself. Right, enough talking. Let's get on with the paddling. Well, there's the small island of uh, Elaine Gorn directly in front of me. What I'll do, I have a little paddle round it before heading a little bit further down the loch.
This is a bit of a recce for a possible overnight wild camp sometime in the future. Okay, I live 600 miles away from here now, but um, I'm planning on getting up more often. I have seen videos on YouTube, people coming over to it. I believe, I certainly think there is a, a boffy on this little island. I'm trying to think, I'm sure I've seen that on YouTube. Wind to take me round. Absolutely amazing. I'm setting up on the shooting beach area, sweating where it's so hot, overdressed. Now it's uh, very overcast and blowing up. It's not cold, but it is blowing up. As I paddle around the island, I've noticed quite a few places where you could just put in quite easily, just slide your kayak up onto beach areas. Uh, it's not happening today. As I said, I've got a feeling, I fear that the uh, weather's going to be against me. As usual, nice and peaceful. This is um, midweek, well it's actually a Thursday. So uh, I've more or less got my lock to myself. I mean, as I was um, just putting in the water, a father and son turned up and they were inflating a little bit three, so they were obviously coming out on it. But uh, I can imagine it would get quite a bit busier at weekends in the summer. Well, directly ahead of us, is a water centre. I did sort of wonder whether I could uh, ask to put in off their jetty because beach beach launching beach launching in this is quite difficult. Um, it's a bit wobbly, but uh, I thought better over it. I thought just just get on with it. A bit choppier out here, as you can probably hear. Loads of uh, boys in the water, which I assume are sailing club boys. So as you can probably see, I'm actually paddling directly across the loch now. And, uh, being buffered by waves, hit by the wind side on. But uh, there's nothing that I can't deal with. Comes to it, I'll turn away from it, head down the lock, or uh, turn into it, and then back up the lock. The thing with me is every time I come out, I head into the wind, thinking that's nice on the way back. I'll get a nice push from behind, and my, my luck is it always changes direction. I always seem to be going into the wind. Once again, for the lobstitch kayak enthusiasts or owners or people thinking of owning, I've uh, ditched the 9 inch skeg for the smaller 3.5 inch skeg. 
and the draft seems to be handled very, very well. As usual. I must admit, um, using the 9 inch skeg would probably be more beneficial on a, a large mess of water, open water like this, because you don't need to do sharp maneuvers like sometimes you do on a river. Um, the only problem is, a lot of your launching is from shingle beaches or rocky beaches, and, and even with the three and a half inch skeg on, I, I sometimes I find I'm walking I'm walking sort of 20 yards out into the water to get it deep enough for me to sit in and the three and a half skeg, skeg to clear the water. And then I'm up to my knees, so I'm struggling to get into the craft. So, and you know, it, it's rocky because now you're, you're literally properly on water. So it sort of swings and roundabouts really, isn't it? With a three and a half, you can you know, take it in less. I mean, um, last year when I was up at Lugnig, one of my sons, we kayaked, uh, up to the top of Lugnig and stopped in a small beach area. One of the boys had a wetsuit on and he just fancied going for a swim. So he started walking out, which is fine, and then he just disappeared. And we, my other son and me, we were creasing up. He literally was walking along just past his ankles. It wasn't getting any deeper. And then it just dropped. <laughs> now you imagine walking your kayak out, <laughs> pushing it backwards because the skeg's on the back. And then suddenly, Zoom, you're under and the kayak's above you. So uh, it's a bit of a compromise, really. So I tend to still just stick with this three and a half inch skeg. I've got the nine with me. Well, I've left it in the vehicle this time. Well, there's the water centre. I see loads of kayaks. I believe they do uh, kayaks for hire. And as you can see, there's some sort of um, inflatable major play area there for the kids in the nicer weather. Looks like a nice place. Obviously uh, no one a boot on the lock. Oh, I can see a paddle boarder in the distance. And I've seen one other kayak, two paddle boarders. They certainly come over dark. Even looks like at the water sports centre they've got a couple of uh, yurts or the TP type tents. I don't know whether they're they're both the same, so I should imagine they're probably to rent out. Good idea. Right, I'm now travelling a bit further down the loch. Not sure if I'll go. As I said, this weather's really uh, really changed quickly. It's gone from a, a mill pond where I put in to a little bit rougher very overcast oh, one of the paddle boulders is falling in and the other one's laughing oh, it's quite a busy road runs along the side of this loch um, it's very nice driving up it obviously you know, it's, like it's hard as a driver but at some points it's a very low wall and you can have a good look at the loch, especially down the other end. That's a pretty house and a nice little boat house there with the jetty. There you can see the, uh, the main road which passes the loch. I don't think there's actually anything on the other side, it's just forest. Further down on the right hand side, up in the hills, is uh, Rob's Roy, Rob Roy's cave. fact that I didn't know because uh, I've seen it from the other side on the uh, West Highland Way and I've been out on the uh, Catherine Lock well many times
I'm probably only going to have time to do half the lock today, in all fairness, and uh, this is my last day up in this area. Tomorrow I'm traveling down to Mogai to um, see my brother and sister-in-law and stay with them overnight before traveling back to the peaks, big district to stay with my, with my sons for a couple of days and spend Father's Day with him. And then I'm back off home to Kent on the Monday. But with me, I'll do half and it'll give me the incentive to come back up and then do the other half. You can probably see directly in front now, there's quite a nice shingle beach area, which I believe is um, in the road, and then there's a hotel dead opposite. Obviously that was one of the points where I would have loved to have actually put in, but there's just nowhere to park for about half a mile. Obviously you can't park in the hotel. So basically the options for putting in are one end of the lock or the other. The hotel looks absolutely beautiful. I must look it up and see the uh, the room rates. Not that I'll stay there, I prefer my camping, but just, just uh, to be nosy. Just going to paddle around this beach area. Well, that'd be a great, great place to put in. I suppose if you're staying at the hotel with your kayak, you could uh, chuck it over the top of that wall, and off you go. And you're sort of halfway down the lock. Perfect position to get in. Go either way. There's the hotel I was talking about. I didn't actually realise the roads are busy. I, I tend to be coming up and down it very early in the morning or very late at night. So, very few cars on it. It looks a smashing hotel. There's another little boathouse there. That's a marker for me because I've driven up and down this lock quite a few times, so it gives me an indication of where I am. Beautiful houses up on the hill there. What a place to live. Well, I've been out on the loch over an hour now, I know by the uh, battery duration on my Osmo action, well, I've had to switch, switch it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pedal to the other, across the lock, to the other side, the forest side, if I can negotiate these waves, and then start heading back up to my putting point. Yeah, the waves in the wind are coming side on there, as you can probably see on the water. Uh, I'm going to turn into them a bit more because uh, it's getting a bit rocky and then go across. That's yeah, better. Let's get a bit of speed up. Whether it's changeable, it's hard to tell what it's going to do. There's, there's, there's fluffy bits, 
bits of blue sky and absolutely filthy clouds. And they just, uh, they just take your chance. I'm having to power paddle now to get across the lock. As you can see it's uh, considerably rougher. Yeah, it's quite choppy out here. Giving the arms a good workout again. I have arms like pup iron, little weak legs because my walking, during the winter I was doing a lot of walking. So obviously my legs got a lot uh, stronger and muscular and the top half suffered. Now I'm back on the top half and uh, the legs are going to mush. As much as I say um, I'm not used to open water, um, in my teens, so from the age of about say 12 till 18, maybe four, five, maybe six years, I was quite heavily into canoeing, canoeing, not so much kayaking then, and uh, sailing. I used to sail uh, two-person dinghies solo on large lakes or large expanses of water so I am sort of used to the water conditions and I am a little bit savvy so I'm not sort of new to the game I got back into kayaking in about 217 when I decided just to buy an inflatable to film on rivers I, I've been into photography and cinematography for quite a few years uh, given up on the drone now but I was doing a lot of aerial uh, videography and uh, a lot of steel work and I thought yes get yourself a, an inflatable get out on the river and it, it's just basically filming the surroundings from a different perspective and uh, I just thoroughly enjoyed it I just got the bug I started off with a Intex Explorer which is a two-person inflatable but within three months because I was literally going further and further started off you know just doing a couple of miles but I thought hey so then I tried a 10 miler in it and it nearly killed me so I upgraded to an Intuit 3 the reason I got a free man was to give me the ability then to carry camping equipment obviously you know for carrying the weight and the size of it load the equipment in the front and put me in the back so um had that for about a year that was great and i was going further afield a lot of drag with that kayak as well brilliant kayak still got it but uh then i upgraded to the drop stitch and again the reason i got the two person the uh best part 16 foot version is for kayak camping not necessarily to take two people out so i can load plenty of equipment in the front paddle to places like that little island I showed you earlier, pitch up for the night and then uh, cross the water in the morning. So yes, uh, the longer kayaks as well, all right, they're heavier, larger to store, but they do tend to handle a lot better than the singles. They track straighter. The longer the kayak, the straighter it'll track. However, I am still debating and I'm out of stock at the moment, whether to buy the single version of this, just for, you know, so I've got this, if two of us want to go out or I want to go camping, and the one, if it's just me and uh, a couple of dry bags. I'll see how it goes. A lot of money to have what, two other kayaks sitting indoors, and one on the water, but we'll see. Well, as you can see, I'm paddling back up the loch now. The island of uh, Eileen, born on my left. I wish it was a nice today. Stop off there and have a little walk around. I, this is where you envy the people that live, you know, within the vicinity that do sort of come out and they've got all this on their doorstep. But in all fairness, I live in a beautiful part of the world now as well. Kent and I've got East Sussex and I've got the coast right on my doorstep so um shouldn't hunt. Oh. Paddling into the wind, absolutely beautiful breeze in my face. No midges out here, they don't like the wind. Oh, 
now heading back towards uh, Kinlochard. It's up the top of the loch there. It's quite interesting um, where I've been pitched up. I've had no internet or no phone signal for the past what, three days. Uh, and I don't need it. I mean, I'm not uploading nothing. I don't need to speak to anybody. I have uh, a pussycat at home that obviously it's been well looked after. So I've been away for, well, I would have been away for 17 days when I do return home. Um, and the only reason I need the phone is just in case there's a problem with a cat and I have to pay some vet bills over the phone. That's the only reason I can think of this very moment I need a phone. Other than the fact I brought with me in case I've got a trouble out on the water. But I've got no signal. Okay, I could use it to take photographs. Other than the fact if I stop paddling, I'm going to be going backwards. <laughs> so uh, it was actually a waste of time bringing the phone on this uh, particular trip. They say take your phone for emergencies and you've got no signal. Never mind. Kinlochard has actually got a telephone box, a red telephone box on the corner of the road as you drive into it. So if you need to make a phone call, you go to the old fashioned telephone box. How cute is that? Well, other than some noisy piece of machinery in the uh, background, which has now stopped, all I could hear is bird song and the waves just buffering underneath the kayak it's got a bit calmer now again there's another kayak ahead I don't know whether that's or a canoe don't know what it is till we get closer my bow two young guys out in it I think they um, they hire them from the walk centre there's also another kayak or canoe I can't make out yet aiming towards the island now I'm going to go around the left hand side circle the island and I might bump into them that may be the year with three the father and son that were uh, just starting to inflate as I put in the water. I met a really nice couple, um, older couple, probably my age to be honest, maybe slightly older, but, um, parked up in a camper van. He was out fly fishing. Uh, I was apologising when I was inflating this because I inflate with a electric well, 12 volt pump, so it can be a bit noisy. But we got chatting. It was quite nice because they're they're up here from they're in northern, but they're they're up here. I think they've been away ten days now touring around. It's just nice to share your experiences where you've been and what you're doing. Remembering I, I'm here on my own. I've been away completely on my own. And obviously I've, I've had odd chats with people on sites and chatted to someone where I'm pitched up now. There's someone in the next uh, forest pitch. Well, the sun's trying to break through the cloud to the left. Don't know whether it'll uh, come through. I just cannot tell what's going to happen today, whatever was. The sky's full of everything. 
Nice snug. So what I'm going to do, rather than go around the left, because I came around that way. Yes, now I'm going to go to the left and go a little bit further around. I think there's a an old boathouse or another tiny little island there. Then I'll circle back. Absolutely beautiful. I've got the sun coming out to me on the left, shining on the water. Quite a nasty grey cloud, cloud in front. Filthy black cloud to my right. Yeah, I'm basking in the sun. Now, did I remember to bring my suntan lotion? I did actually. I just leave it in the uh, dry bag with my skin so soft for the bugs. My little first aid kit. I'm a good boy scout. Yeah, what do you think of these views? See the winds are uh, coming from the left. It's turning me around. I don't want to go that way. We keep going to the left and then we'll double back to the island. There's a uh, kayak or canoe, so I can't make it out, but it's actually on the beach area there. If it's bright orange, it's in it to it, but I, I really can't quite make out what it is. There's the views behind me. Looking across to the far bank, you can probably see the uh, water sports centre. I'm not sure. I'm not. I can't turn around to look. <sighs> Pedal down. A mouthful of water. This is the life. And I think later this afternoon I'm going to uh, pop, into, pop into the nearest town, which is Aberfoyle. Pick up some provisions. Running short on beer and wood, so uh, hopefully I can pick up some more wood from the fire tonight. A few extra bevies. I'll be up early tomorrow morning to strike the pitch. Get myself down to Morgai to my brothers for a nice soak in the bath. A shave. 
I actually did yesterday. I, I brought an uh, eight litre um, hand pump pressure washer with me and I filled it up with four litres hot water, two litres of cold, had a shower in, out in the open. It was lovely and I've had a shave, shaved my head as well. Look, five or six days worth of growth gone. It felt amazing. But I'm looking forward to a soak in a bath, pop a bath. I'm just sitting here letting the wind take me now. It's just a gentle breeze. It's just turning me round. Just having a rest, just floating. Taking in the scenery. Lovely and quiet. Looks absolutely amazing when the sun comes out. I was very, very lucky yesterday. There was um, no rain. It only rained at night, so very pleased with that. And today, so far, it's held off. see what's around here. I've got a feeling there may be just a little little boathouse. The videos I watched on Lockhart were mainly over a year ago because I was obviously planning on coming out on it last year. Well there's an absolute baby island there. I don't think you'd be doing any camping on that one. So peaceful up this end. I have a real feeling I'm uh, I was already thinking about it last night sitting around the campfire after several premium lagers about coming up in September once the school holidays are out of the way you know the back end also it's uh, that's the end of midgy season so you don't get those little blighters bothering you And what I will probably do is um, pitch up at Chong, uh, sorry, pitch up at Lok Kong again, and then over to Lok Akre. Just for a quiet life. And there's a few locks over there on the smaller side. Look at this, this is like a mill pond. You see your face in it. It's lovely and calm up this this uh, end. And there seems to be a bit of a bay. I didn't expect this. I uh, up to the top end. I knew there was a little sort of channel off of it, but it's absolutely stunning around here.
There we go, another canoe coming towards us. There's quite a few people out now, especially up this end. Oh, there's two. Oh, we keep going down here for a bit and then uh, double back. Oh yeah, you all right? Oh yeah, you're right. This is a beautiful little bay. Absolutely lovely. And just look at these views as I turn. Absolutely stunning. I uh, got to talk to the father and daughter, it turned out in the uh, Intuit kayak and interestingly he's paddling it with a canoe paddle and uh, says he much prefers the, that type of paddle and the kayak seems to be handling itself quite well up this end of the loch which is uh, it is considerably calmer than some of the pieces I went down but well, I've still got one myself I still love the the canoe I just like the glide of this and the controllability when it does get a little bit rougher. I do like to have the power paddle now and again. But then I do like lolloping about as well because I'm filming and I like to just stop and just take in the scenery. Oh, thoroughly enjoyable. My last paddle of the trip. And it's been a good one. I haven't done been out on the paddle as much as I anticipated. I think I, I grossly overplanned the things I was going to do in the days I had. It was absolutely impossible even with perfect weather. But um, yeah, all in all, the kayak inside has now come up trumps. Get getting Coniston Con and this. That's good enough. Anything I haven't managed to do is at the front of my bucket list sometime later in this year. God willing. And uh, COVID being kept at bay. There seems to be quite a few people on the island now. I suppose a little bit later in the day. A few more kayakers, quite a few higher kayaks out. This has been an absolutely lovely experience. The weather's held off enough. I mean, the wind's kicked up now and again, the sun's come out. But it hasn't rained. So uh, now I'm heading back to Kinlochard. To, um, 
pack away and then I'm going to head into the toon, into town. Pick up some bits. I'm going to have a nice early tea. Something, oh, I don't know what, maybe a steak. Steak and mash tonight, and then I'm going to get some of my stuff packed up. Ready to uh, leave tomorrow morning. Just leaving the essentials out to um, back away in the morning. I want to strike camp relatively early. Yeah, love it, love it up here. There's an old saying, you can take the boy out of Scotland can't take Scotland out of the boy and that is that's very true well I'm just taking a slow paddle back to the uh, shingled beach area by Kinlochard village hall and it's getting very very murky now quite choppy so it's probably a good time to call it quits now. Oh, there's a canoe, three-person canoe there. Oh, they're having fun. I think most of these are uh, from the uh, water sports centre they're hired. Oh yeah, you are right. There's my exit point, dead ahead. Just the village hall, there's a little um, community field opposite, which you're allowed to access to put in on the water. And uh, apparently there's a lot of fishing done at, uh, around this area. Well, I'm nearly done now. Hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed the paddle and making the video. Um, it's been a while since I've done any kayaking, obviously mainly because of the lockdown, yeah, the COVID lockdown. Uh, most of the videos were local walking videos, which was fine, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed myself, kept me a bit active, but it is very nice to be back out on the paddle. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for visiting my channel. I've got uh, camping videos on there, um, walking, kayaking, basically anything I do out and about, if it's, I think it's worth it, I chuck it on there. So uh, please have a browse through. Feel free to comment below. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Right. That's me done, so see you on the next video. Bye for now.